Welcome to the Comprehensive DDD Guide. In this 10 part series, I will explain everything you need to know to start off and become an excellent DDD player and unleash the power of capitalism with our corporate demons. Part 2 Basic 2 Card Combos Last time, we have learned the basics of DDDs and how the 1 card combos worked. But we noticed that our 1 card combos burn through a lot of resources, that's why we are looking into the 2 card combos. So without further ado, let's get started. Introducing the key pieces, Copper, Griffin and Arthros. All three of them enable us to not only save our resources, but make our end board even stronger. With these three monsters, we unlock our Siegfried lines. This guy is our quick effect spell trap negate. He only targets but does not destroy, which is a true nightmare for Unchained by the way. He only works on the field though. He protects us from bot breakers and can be used to control our own floodgates by disabling them in our turn. Next up is Headhunt. This is our snatch steal at home, which is even better. It not only steals your opponent's monster, but it negates its effect too. And if this monster just so happened to be from the extra deck, it is converted as a DDD card as well, which means that we can overlay our opponent's monster into Machinex, or use it as a fusion fodder for our big OTK DDDs. Now, with all these missing pieces, our standard board looks like this. Aside from the Machinex attach and Caesar's special summon negate, we now have one additional spell trap negate and one additional snatch steal plus monster negate. Truly, an almost unbreakable board. Now to the checkpoints. To get access to Siegfried, you need a free level 4 body and DD Arthurus, which can special itself from hand either by pen summoning or taking effect damage. Usually done by foolishing patent license and using the reborn effect of Ragnar. For Headhunt, you need to reborn Griffin from the grave, which means that you need an excess reborn for Griffin. Additionally, you have to keep in mind that Headhunt is only live if you have a DDD monster on the field. Okay, before we go into the combos, here's a small reminder of our card placement. You memorized it? Good, moving on. Now to the two card combos. Okay, starting off with a weird one. First off, normal summon Kepler. Kepler effect, we search for a gate again, we get to the Rhoda, we Rhoda ourselves our Griffin. Now we get our Griffin to the hand, and now we can special the Griffin to the field again, so that we have an extra body for our Gilgamesh play. Now we proceed just like the one card combo, meaning when we activate Gilgamesh, we will scale Rage and Serb to the field, and then we can pen summon Kepler and Griffin from the extra deck, but the Kepler in hand as well, so that we can use that extra body for further plays in our end board. Now we level up one of our Kepler's with Serp's effect, and go to our usual place, meaning we will go into our small Caesar, then we go into our hotel, to dump Necro Slime and to fetch our Dark Contract with the Swamp King out of the deck so that we can have access to our two small Genghis to lastly go into our big Caesar. As usual. Now, here's the kicker. Since we have our extra Kepler, we can use the Kepler to link up into our final Gilgamesh, meaning that we didn't waste one of our Machinex and have the Gilgamesh live on the field, which is an excellent floater for any of our DDs in the extra deck. Which means that if our opponent decides to pop or destroy our Gilgamesh on the field, we can float into any of our DDs from the extra deck to the field in defense position, which is Awesome. Now look at the field. We have 7 disruptions now just by having 2 cards, which is insane. 
Now Kepler and Thomas. This time I will show you how awesome it is to have Thomas in hand because this will make Gilgamesh not only a scaler but someone who fetches resources right from the deck. Okay, here we go. Just like last time I will do the standard play, fetching Griffin from the deck to the hand so that I can special him so that I can go into Gilgamesh. But this time pay attention what I'm scaling. I will scale Othros and Copper. Why? Because now I will use Gilgamesh's effect to actually fetch these resources from the deck. Now I will use Authors to pop Copper and itself so that it goes to the extra deck and now I can scale Thomas so that I can fetch Authors from the extra deck again and rescale it because Authors pop effect is not once per turn. And now, boom, I have Copper as another Foolish that I can use. Now I can use Copper's Foolish effect. How awesome is that? From then onwards, we don't even need to go into Tell, meaning we can go from these guys into Small Caesar into our Swamp King fetch right away. And then we can just go and fuse into our Small Genghis. Now we overlay into Machinex so that we can trigger Small Genghis' Reborn effect and now we use the Reborn effect to Reborn Griffin. Now we use Griffin's third effect to fetch Headhunt from the deck to our hand. Now we can use the extra body of Griffin so that we go into our second Small Genghis and afterwards we overlay into our Big Caesar. But this time we have Headhunt on board, baby! Let's go! Look at the board. We have 6 disruptions with 1 Snatch Steel plus Negate and insane follow-up with 2 Gilgamesh in the deck. Okay, now to a bit more unusual hand. We have Gate and Lamia. We use Gate to search for Copper. This time we use Copper to Foolish our Necro first though. So we use Copper to Foolish our, our Necro, right? And then we use Lamia to special itself, either by dumping our contract or by using one of our extra DDs. This time I use one of my extra DDs, either way is fine. But then we go into our Griffin play, uh, basically scaling Griffin and Thomas so that we can do our usual one card combo line and afterwards we will just pop off from there. But since we have Necroslam already in the grave, we don't even need to go into Tell. So that means we can save ourselves one extra play and go into our second Gilgamesh and dump our small Caesar right away. This time we can fetch Swamp King and with that we have two small Gengars on board, meaning we have access to our big Caesar. Well, this line doesn't make the one card combo gate line any stronger, but it saves us a lot of resources, meaning that we still have one extra Gilgamesh and one extra Machinex in the extra deck as a spare material so that we can go to follow-up place in our third turn to OTK our opponent and push through. This is one of our standard plays. We have any level 4 plus Griffin. We special Griffin and now we can go into Gilgamesh again. And we activate Gilgamesh's effect now to set the best scales ever though. Orthros and Ragna. Orthros is a soft once per turn pop of spells and traps and Ragna is an additional reborn. We special our level 4 plus Griffin out. And this time we just usually overlay into our small Caesar. As you can see you can pitch a uh, extra DD or a spare DD from hand to the grave so that you can draw an additional time and now you can go into tell as usual. You have seen that play all over again. Don't forget to burn your opponent by 1000. Go into your second Gilgamesh by dumping the tell. You can now foolish your 
Necro Slime so that you have access to your small Gengus play, but this time there's something different since you have two new scales in the field. You will fuse into your first small Gengus, right? And then you will trigger the effect of Ragnar since you have special DD now to reborn the Caesar. And by reborn the Caesar, now you can reborn the Griffin. And now you can fetch uh, DD Hatan from the deck to your hand. And you can use Authors to pop a DD and a spell trap, this case Authors itself, to now go into your second floating into Swamp King and now use Swamp King to go with the second or spare body uh, of Griffin to your second small Genghis making the big Caesar play. Now don't forget to overlay into Machnex and set your headhunt and you are looking at a 5 interruption end board. Voila! Okay, now we're going to our second standard line, which is copper plus another four. Now we have the foolish uh, Swirl Slime. So set in our benches so that we can special any TD out of our hand to our field. With our second free body, as usual, we go into Gilgamesh, and from then onwards, it's literally the same play as you saw in the first combo with Griffin and any level four just now. Basically, you want to scale Orthros and Ragnar, and you can pop up from there. Meaning you can over into Small Caesar and from Small Caesar you go into Tell, then you want to Foolish, the Necro Slime, then you want to get into your Swarm King. But this time, however, as we don't have a Griffin, sadly we can grab Headhunt. Keep that in mind. Okay, now we have to revive our Caesar again, but since we don't have our Griffin on board this time in the graveyard to revive, we want to revive our Tell with our small Genghis. Why you might ask? Well, we will use that Tell not to foolish something, but to overlay it into Machinex instead, so that we don't have to waste our Gilgamesh to get our Machinex access. Why? Well, because Gilgamesh is a floater, we still have 5 interruptions or like 5 interactions in the opponent's turn with this board, which is still okay. Okay, with this we have 2 sucks with Machinex, 2 special summoning gates, and a floater with Gilgamesh into any DDD extra deck monster. This is the certified classic, Copper and Griffin full combo, Copper will foolish Necro Slime. And now we can special Griffin from the hand to go into our usual place with Authors and Ragnar. But this time we will have the access to Siegfried, because in the last couple of combos we didn't have it. What's different this time? This time we have our spare Foolish Burial from Copper. Now we can use Tell's Foolish Spirit for something else. Now, come check this out. After we overlay into Tell and burn the opponent, we will Foolish something different than Necro. Okay, now you want to activate Authors already. Authors will pop itself and Tell. Tell will now Foolish Pattern License. And now with Pattern License and Grave, Pattern License will allow you to get your authors back from the extra deck to your hand. And now, you go into your small Genghis play. Activate Necro to get small Genghis from the grave using Copper. Ragnar will trigger itself to Reborn with a cost of 1000 life points. Now small Genghis will trigger, reviving the Griffin, and now Chainlink 2 Authors, because we just took 1000 life points damage, so it can special itself from your hand for free. This is insane. 
Now you can grab Headhunt from the deck because you just revived the Griffin. And now you only have to dump the Caesar so that we can get our Swamp King to have access to our second small Genghis. And this is basically our full board. Now we go into Siegfried. And afterwards you go into your same place, meaning another small Genghis, afterwards you go into your big Caesar, and lastly you go into your Machinax. And set your headhunt. Creating an end board with two sucks, two special summon negates, one quick effect spell trap negate, and one snatch steal plus monster negate on the field. Isn't that insane? But what if I told you there's an even better two card combo? Kaplan and Griffin creates the strongest end board ever as a two card combo. So the thing we're doing now is after getting gate, we will search for copper, right? And then we have copper in hand. We then special our Griffin to the field so that we do our usual Gilgamesh play. From then we want to activate Gilgamesh to set Authors and Ragnar on the field and then Pen Summon Griffin from the extra deck but Copper from the hand as Pen Summon. And by summoning Copper we can then Foolish Necro already, making the Tell the Spare Foolish to use for Patent License and the Authors as a scale so that we have access to Siegfried. Insane. Okay, right now it's basically the same play like the combo you just saw with Copper and Griffin. But this time, the only difference is that we have another Dark Contract on the field in our end board. That means that our Machinax is now able to suck 4 times. Okay, check out this end board. We have two special summon negates, one quick effect spell trap negate, up to four sucks with Machinex, and one snatch steal plus monster negate with headhunt. With two cards, we created eight interruptions. Eight interruptions, and we still have three cards in hand. How insane is that? Congratulations, Associate. Now you are on the right track of becoming a formidable DDD pilot. However, there is one thing missing. Our opponent is not a solo mode bot doing T passes. They will have hand traps, especially in the higher ranks. And if they are good at a game, they will know your choke points. Our blue man is their primary target for eating imperms, veilers and mortars. And then you are a sitting duck. Or even worse, you just have to set up your board and before you get to your big Caesar, suddenly a comet hits the field and tributes all of your monsters for a fat token. So what are we doing? When our opponent actually plays the game, scoop? Nah, we're built different. In the next video, I will show you how to play around any hand trap that the opponent might throw at you while you do your DDD combos. Next time in the DDD guide, playing around hand traps.